I'm ahead of the game today. I already got the truck packed. Got my brick project done. Landscapers are still MIA. New issue is that I have water intrusion in the front bedroom. You can probably see that I have a bandsaw blade sticking out the side of the house. It's getting in right by the chimney, so I cut a hole in the wall inside, pinpoint it, that's how I stuck the blade out. This weekend I'm gonna peel the siding from here and here, caulk that all up, maybe do some uh, tuck pointing work. Always something. Back at it, back at it. Bill bought a new tool. So it's a South Bend Heavy 10. It's from the 50s, maybe? I'm not sure. It's got a serial number to look up, actually. He's got some hoops to crank out. I'm gonna fill that bass drum, then we'll move back to the guitar. I brought, every time I come over here, I'm bringing more tools. Yep. It's like soon I'm gonna be leaving a toothbrush, <laughs> borrowing a t-shirt, <laughs> asking for my own drawer. <laughs> Things are escalating. Wood filler of choice. Color tone, mahogany. Wood based grain filler. Hide some of my crimes. It's not going to hide all of them. We're going to leave the dents. Just fill where uh, I unfortunately pulled some wood out with a wrap, blasted through the veneer like a novice. What are you going to do? This one is a quick sand back with 320, another round of dye. Once again, I get the pleasure of trading out Uncle Pappy's tack cloth from the 1700s. You gotta treat yourself. Let's see if I can keep a wet edge on this entire shell or if I screw the pooch. Jury is out. Oh, I don't want to splatter. No splatter, no splatter, no splatter. Yeah, I mean, if you if you get it pretty wet, it's small enough that you you might be able to. Go, Otherwise, you, you know, like doing dirty, dirty talk again. Doing yeah, right. Do a like clean up clean up wipes as you go. <laughs> it's too early to be getting off track like this. I know, right? Started out a bit rough, but I caught my groove, so we'll see how her how she lands. Got the rim mount on this tom, heads on the kick. Tentative tuning, my tuning skills, uh, they're a little uh, out of practice and they suck. <laughs> Sand down my patches so I can hit this with Odie's oil. Bilbo Baggins is working on some hoops. Yep. This is the last thing for that drum set for Matt Dudek. Oh, that goes with this one? Yeah, so those, it's those, the two floor toms are over on the, on the shelves. I saw those. And then the snare is, is a six and a half by 14 mahogany. Oh, I saw that over there too. Yeah, with these wood hoops that I'm working on. And then that drum set can finally get shipped out. To a very patient 
There they are. This one? Yes. I'm headed to Boston, Massachusetts to work with Bill Whitley. Bill makes rope tension drums. Now these are the kind of drums that you would have seen during the Civil War. Oh, sorry, did you want to do some of this? No. <laughs> I do it all the time. So we know about the music side mm -hmm. of it. How did you get the craftsmanship side of it? Honestly, man, it's, it's all just stuff my dad taught me. Getting some splotching, which I'm not happy about. The test spots blended well, but some spots do not, right there. So we decided, oh, let's hit those spots with uh, 220. See if we can just get them out. I, that's been sanded. This has been sanded and re-oiled, but now we have a color difference, so I think what I'm probably going to end up doing is hitting the spots. Hit them with a little bit of oil maybe? I don't know, but I'll probably end up having to let it cure out. Lightly sand everything back. And you know, this is a do just as much as you have to kind of drum, so <laughs> budget busted. So that travesty of a bass drum is going to have to cure out before we sand it back, it just clogs the paper. This is nearing deadline, Handle and Haydn Society, so it's getting boiled linseed oil top coat. Probably poly on the inside, I don't know yet. What's that? What it's getting on the inside. Oh, it'll get oil, but... The same oil? Yeah, but... A Probably wait until after bearing edges are cut and stuff. Gotta do that last. You heard him. Yup. Figured you'd be outside and signing autographs after your documentary. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm just gonna go out on a limb and say I don't think that's gonna make me famous. <laughs> Pretty cool, but I don't think that's gonna make me famous. My uncanny ability to toss throw away wood cutoffs into a trash can from the other side of the shop, however, that might make me famous. Yeah, you could be a rip-off scam artist at a traveling carnival. Yeah, right? Surprisingly, this is going rather well and not pulling out the die. move the camera but I don't want to lose my wet reference edge so sorry this is Bill's jig for milling slots in hoops using the mill yeah. used to do it on the router but that was a total butt pucker yeah not fun easy to lose 
control of the piece, rip it out of your hand, lose a finger. This is much better, much more controlled, Oops. more accurate. Well, mostly. Yeah, we're just going to cut with the head. Okay, not exactly take that in. That's the bottom hoop for this guy. Because before there were a couple spots that I was worried about. Yeah, no, I like I like how it turned out. One less thing. Yeah. One less thing. These need badges. That needs snares. Tensioned. Didn't make as much progress as we thought we'd get on the guitar, but. Yeah. What are you gonna do? I mean, a lot of it today was answering questions that I didn't know weren't answered yet. Um, so, I mean, that was important. Knob placement, how many knobs, yeah. how to wire it. Yeah, I didn't realize how to shape it, how much of a challenge that was going to be um, in terms of figuring out where to put stuff. But I think we have a good plan now. I just had to order some parts and then um, uh, from there, I think it's going to be on to shaping the blades. I'll do that next week. Yep. And go watch a craftsman's legacy. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, turned out pretty cool. It's like a 36 minute documentary. Yeah. I want one now. I know, huh? The Bales Workshop. <laughs>